William Kearney, master pâtissier and chocolatier. What are you going to make? A very interesting dessert that we created for, for Malden. It's a Toscana dark chocolate mousse, scented with a Malden sea salt caramel, uh -huh. apricot compote, lemon thyme ice cream, and a croquant wafer. That's good. So the first thing we're going to make uh, is the chocolate mousse. Uh -huh. So we're using Toscana 65. It's quite a fruity, oh, it's just a wonderful chocolate. It, mm. it, it's fabulous for this type of mousse we're going to make. Uh -huh. We've got some egg yolks and we have some sugar. Of course, whenever you add sugar to egg yolks, you must give it a very good mix. <laughs> when you add the sugar, uh, it can actually weaken the egg yolks. If you give it a good mix together, a good whisk, sort of emulsify together, it becomes much more smoother and you don't lose any of the strength in the egg yolks. And then we have the cream. Just bring it to the boil. Just don't overboil it. Yeah. We're going to add half of the liquid to the layers. Just straight in. Just straight in. Yeah. Okay, we'll just mix. So and there we add the liquid back to the pan. What we're looking to do here, we're looking to cook this to about 83, 84 degrees Celsius, which seems very, very precise. But the old sort of trick is you're looking for the custard to coat the bat of the spoon. Uh -huh. You just pour the custard. Just run it through. Start to mix the custard into the chocolate. Mm -hmm. So this doesn't need heating at all once you put the, uh... the, the... Absolutely, the temperature of the, the custard is enough to, to melt the chocolate. That would be nice and shiny, absolutely. nice and glossy. So when all the chocolate has melted, it's nice and smooth, nice and shiny, that is the base for the mousse chocolat. With the folded cream in, so if you give it maybe five, 10 minutes to, okay. to cool down. For the sea salt caramel, we have some caster sugar. Yeah. We have unsalted butter. We have some whipping cream, fresh vanilla, Madagascan, and of course, Malden sea salt. Fantastic. Very simple. We take the cream and we bring it to the boil. We're gonna put a little bit of vanilla in here as well. It's Madagascan. Lovely for me, it's one of the best vanillas mm. in the world. So for, for the caramel, uh, we'll get a little bit of sugar in the pan, just a touch, just That's to get true. things going. So now we're going. So the caramel's starting to appear, or the sugar's starting to caramelise. And then we gradually add the sugar stage by stage. And you achieve that by? By taking it quite to the edge. Right. So, Obviously not burnt, but you you know, a lot of people maybe at this stage would think that's a caramel, but if you take the sugar up and have a look at it, it's actually quite light. Right. So the flavour in that will be quite quite weak. It's a much deeper colour. Yeah, and that's just nearly there now. And I can take it off and just put it on my little board, then we add the cream. Just be careful, it's gonna boil up. Everything in vanilla as well. That goes in as well again. Yeah. Okay. I'll get the salt in. So this is the mould I'm going in. Molding. How much was that, approximately? That was about two, two and a half grams. Okay. I think we'll add another little pinch for luck. Smashing. Why is it important to have uh, sea salt? Sea salt caramel, uh, Normandy, Brittany, in France, very, very famous caramel mou, mm -hmm. uh, classic French confectionery. I think what the saltness does, it gives you that yin and yang, if you want, the sweet, savoury element. Mm -hmm. uh, now, of course, we've made the caramel quite deep and quite rich in flavour, but nonetheless, it's still quite a lot of sugar, mm. so you've got this sort of salt balancing it off, which I think makes it such a fabulous combination. Lovely smooth surface that, isn't Beautiful, it? Beautiful, isn't it? Mould in sea salt caramel. Yeah. Uh, we're now all done, but we need to let it cool down, right. let it set up, so we're going to put it in a cool, dry area, maybe two, three hours, okay. to let all the fat set, come to room temperature. This is now five, ten minutes in the fridge. Yeah. It's, it's, it's cooler now and it's also thickened up, so uh -huh. it's ready for the, the next stage. Cream lightly whipped, and then we take approximately one third of the whipped cream, and then we just start to fold it into the mousse. Again, it's important to add it gently. Uh, absolutely. The more you mix, the more air is going to, to vanish, uh, and of course, the more dense the mousse will be as well, which we don't want. Right, cool. We've got this wonderful mould, it's a flexi mould, and yeah. as you can see, it is flexible. Sure. We're going to line this with the mousse, sea salt caramel, sponge, crunchy biscuit, then we'll pop them in the freezer. And once it's frozen, you can pop them out. Okay. 
Well, I guess you, um, if you were doing this at home, you, should, you could shortcut this by putting it into a glass. Oh, you? absolutely, yeah. yes. Yeah. Yeah. And then it's sponge and a crispy biscuit time. We'll have a chocolate GMS sponge, Savion over a bain eggs, sugar, twist together, light and fluffy. Okay. Then we fold in some cocoa powder, sift it with some flour. This is a, what we call a, a, a fointing biscuit, a crunchy wafer biscuit. Mm -hmm. So we've got some dried, uh, it's actually dried crepes, which are mixed with a praline paste and some uh, milk and dark chocolate. I've actually pre-cut these yeah. uh, and, and this is what we're going to use here. Okay. Now put the sponge in. And then here we have a Gramagne syrup. Sugar and water boiled together, a little bit of vanilla, Gramagne. Uh -huh. uh, and then we're going to put this wonderful malt and sea salt caramel, which we put in the bag a little bit earlier, like such. And this time we give it a little squeeze mm -hmm. just so the caramel spreads out evenly. Yeah, the Gramagne mix again, it just gives the sponge, you know, I mean, the sponge is relatively moist, but. And then you just start to put these on the top. So there we are. Wonderful. So how long are we going to put these in for? So normally I would actually make this a day before, ideally, and leave it overnight and then they're completely frozen. But if you've got a really good quality freezer, within, you know, three, four hours it could be fine. Okay. William, here we are then. These have uh, come out? Yes, well they're going to come out now, yes, they're nice and frozen. We're going to pop these out. Very nice. Looking good. Fantastic. Beautiful and shiny. And then carefully just put this. Okay. So I'm now going to put these in the fridge for 30 minutes to uh -huh. defrost. Okay. To dress the plate, apricot vanilla sauce. We then have some crushed hazelnuts, which have been caramelised. Uh huh. This into the plate. Some of the poached apricots. It's a little bit of lemon thyme. Mm -hmm. We'll ask why that's going on because we're going to put on the top of the dish. This is genuine gold. It's genuine edible gold, absolutely. We then have some wafer caramelised biscuit. And then finally, we have the lemon thyme ice cream. So for a cake, doesn't that look good? So we have a Toscana tart chocolate mousse centred with a malden sea salt caramel, mm -hmm. apricot vanilla sauce, poached apricots and lemon thyme ice cream. Fit for a king. Indeed. Thank you. Mm.